Hey everyone, welcome to Broadband Deployment News. One of the ways that fiber operators are going to be able to compete, excuse me, cable operators are going to be able to better compete with fiber operators is through the DOCSIS 4.0 standard. And Cable Apps has just come out now and said that they are ready to start accepting cable modems to be certified to that standard. Be right back with the details. Thanks for joining me, Rick Husey here with Broad, Broadband Deployment News. Uh, it's Friday, so I uh, can't talk anymore this week. Uh, you see here the story on light reading. Uh, the cable industry's push, let's see, uh, Cable Labs kicks off DOCSIS 4.0 modem certification program. Cable Labs industry push into the DOCSIS 4.0 era took another step forward this week with word that Cable Labs and its Curio subsidiary will allow suppliers to submit DOCSIS 4.0 based cable modems for certification testing starting June 26. So Cable Labs is the organization, if you're not aware of this, the organization that originally developed the DOCSIS standard, starting with DOCSIS, I think probably 1.0, if I recall, uh, and then over the years has uh, added to that and has taken us from uh, you know the very beginnings of cable modem service when it was what was called uh, telco return, where you um, had data coming down at, you know, over your coax cable, but then you returned everything. The upstream was over a telephone line. So it started with that, and then uh, DOCSIS 2, DOCSIS 3.0, DOCSIS 3.1, and now we're at DOCSIS 4.0. There's a big jump between DOCSIS 3 and DOCSIS 3.1. 3.1 really should have been DOCSIS 4.0, I think, and now we've got, we'd have DOCSIS 5.0. But we had DOCSIS 3.0, DOCSIS 3.1, and DOCSIS 4.0 now is what is ready. Uh, so Cable Labs, they developed the standard. They maintain that. They and their partner, Curio, is the partner that they use to certify all these devices. The really nice thing about DOCSIS, and this, this is not available in the fiber world, the really nice thing about DOCSIS is that there is this standard uh, that Cable Labs has developed. When I say DOCSIS, the nice thing about cable modems is there's this standard that uh, has been developed by, by, the, by Cable Labs, this DOCSIS standard, that means that all equipment manufacturers are going to make their equipment to the standard. That's the CMTS that uh, the cable modems connect to, as well as the cable modems. They all need to support DOCSIS and all of the various features and MIBs that are in DOCSIS. And when they do, then you know that the equipment is going to be compatible and interact with each other the way that you would expect. So that means you can have any CMTS out there made by one manufacturer, like somebody, uh, I'm trying to remember all the names of them now, you know, it used to be Aris, but now they were now they were purchased by, is it Comscope? I can't remember anymore. So you've had uh, different uh, CMTS manufacturers, you had different cable modem manufacturers, they, they interrupted, you didn't need to buy the same access equipment as the CPE, and it all interrupted. If you develop diagnostics like we do, then it's very easy, relatively speaking, to be able to write your diagnostics to all of the cable, Cable Lab standards, and then you know that this equipment is going to be providing you the diagnostics information in the format that you expect it in, in the specific place where you expect it to be. Um, so it makes it much easier. Uh, so for equipment manufacturers, if they want to play here in the, in the DOCSIS world, they need to be supporting that standard. They don't have to, but if they don't, then uh, it's going to be less likely that uh, that cable operators are going to buy their equipment because they want to make sure that stuff's standard. They don't want to be locked into a piece of equipment that's not standard and have issues. They want to, you know, diagnostics software. We want to make sure that um, we're supporting DOCSIS so that we can support that one thing. Now, in the fiber world, there's not really a standards body. They try to do things a certain way, and there's some things like TR69 that provide some standards on getting information, those kinds of things. But there's not a standards body that says, you must do it this way. And that makes it much harder for equipment to be inter uh, interop with each other, makes it much harder on diagnostics applications that tend to have to, uh, if they're going to not, uh, if, they're, if they're not going to support just one manufacturer and work with that manufacturer directly, they have to write their diagnostics to uh, each platform, basically, and make sure that it's working and it, it prevents, presents all kinds of problems. So DOCSIS is really nice that way. So that's what Cable Labs does. And right now they're ready to start. Uh, doing the certification for DOCSIS 4.0 CPE, the cable modems. According to Cable Lab's current certification wave schedule, wave 144 is set to start on July 3rd, wave 145 on October 2nd. Those are just regularly scheduled waves where uh, Cable Labs will say, okay, we're going to do standards testing now. And in this particular case, it's like, hey, we're opening up for DOCSIS 4.0 now. So it's not just that if you had 
a DOCSIS 3.1 modem that you just brought out that you want to get certified now, it's like everybody's got DOCSIS 4 is going to be starting to participate all at once here if they can. Um, let's see. Uh, stamp is also needed for DOCSIS devices sold at retail. So again, this ensures interop interoperability between equipment and again, diagnostics, those kinds of things. And again, if you want to, let's say, have put your equipment at Best Buy, <laughs> You know, then you need to have this this DOCSIS standard, and that's again something a little bit different with cable operators. Is they can, because it's a standard, they can go put it in a big box store, or something like that, and somebody can go buy their CPE. They don't need to necessarily uh, lease it from the the cable company, and as long as it's a DOCSIS standard, it's generally going to work with whatever the equipment that is that the cable operator has. Uh, it's unclear how long it might take. Uh, that's because there's, you know, just there's an iterative process. And actually, they've made some changes here that I'll talk about in a minute. That's going to be kind of a give and take that they don't normally do. Uh, uh, cable Labs is opening up DOCSIS 4.0 modem testing at several major cable operators, including Comcast, Charter Communications, Cable One, Cox, and Canada's Rogers. As they move ahead with uh, their network upgrades, it mentions here also a Dutch operator, Vodafone, announced that this month that is conducting DOCSIS 4.0 tests. Um, depending on the configuration, DOCSIS 4.0 will enable symmetrical multi-gigabit speeds up to 10 gig down by 6 gig up. So that's obviously getting them much, much closer to what's available in Fiber today. In Fiber today, most uh, deployments are, are GPON, uh, 1 gigabit PON, symmetrical. And XGS PON is now making its way out there. I just did a story yesterday about two service providers. It was TDS and uh, Lumen Quantum Fiber announced that they're going to be rolling out 8 gig fiber in, a, in several different markets. Now, I mentioned at the time that that was a marketing ploy because nobody's really going to pay for that or want that. Uh, you know, if Lumen is offering 1 gig in a market and 8 gig in a market, why would anybody go with the 8 gig when they can get 1 gig when they have to pay more and it's not really going to make much of a difference to them? But in those markets, Comcast, is, for example, is in there in Fort Myers, as I showed, Fort Myers, Florida. Comcast is there with a 12, 1.2 uh, gig down product. And uh, Lumen, I think it was, didn't have, right? They were DSL there right now. So when they roll out fiber, in Fort Myers, they're going to come out with, I'm sure, a gig product, but also an eight gig product. So they can then win the marketing war with Comcast. Right now, Comcast is saying, hey, we've got 1.2 gig. We're the fastest around. Lumen's going to be able to come out and say, hey, we're way faster. We can do you know six times that. It's 1.2, whatever it is. So um, anyway, that's, that's a marketing thing. But uh, you can see here, same kind of thing. So cable operators could get up to 10 gig down six gig up, which is more than fast enough for the long, near term and almost really long term future. We'll see what happens with applications and things like augmented reality, virtual reality, or whatnot. But, um, you know, with the kind of things that people are doing now, and, and, you know, that's that's very, very fast. Um, it's testing for FDD and FDX. So there's two types of uh, competing. There were two types of competing things that were prior to DOCSIS 4.0 were being looked at at two separate standards. You had Full duplex, and you had uh, what was called extended spectrum DOCSIS, which now they're calling, um, what is it? That's the oh, frequency division duplexing. Uh, so you got FDD or FDX. And uh, originally, those two competing things, it's like some cable operators wanted to go one way, others wanted to go the other way, and that's still kind of the case. And then uh, Cable Labs came out and said, we know what, we're going to put, put both of those in a new standard called DOCSIS 4.0, rather than going down these two separate paths. So... Uh, full FDD, known as Extended Spectrum DOCSIS, also ESD. It says it, that uses a traditional method of running upstream and downstream traffic in sept separate spectrum. And that's the way that cable plants are set up today. You've got your um, upstream spectrum. You've got your downstream spectrum. Generally, you've got a lot more of the spectrum that you have, your total spectrum. A lot, you've got a lot more of that allocated to downstream because that's where people are generally what they're using it for. They're wanting to download stuff and not necessarily upload a lot of stuff. The need for a higher upload bandwidth has become more prevalent in recent years with kinds of applications we're doing, especially um, something like this where I'm streaming, Zoom calls, those kinds of things where you're you're transmitting data up more than you are or more than you used to be. You're still by far consuming a lot more data downstream by you know streaming Netflix and Hulu and 4D for you know uh, high definition and 4K, excuse me, those kinds of things. So we're still consuming a lot more. 
but we're also putting a lot more out there now, but um, it's, it's still much less that you need on the upstream side. So that's the, that's the way cable has always done it, is split the spectrum, a small portion for upstream, a larger portion for downstream. And what extended spectrum DOCSIS does, or uh, again, they call it FDD, that's really the way it's been the whole time, this um, frequency division duplex. And that's basically what that is. You're splitting up your plant. That's no different. It's just this extended spectrum portion of it. You're you're going to higher splits where um, you can have more upstream and more downstream in the same spectrum. So um, that's the that's the first way. And then you've got full duplex. That's new. That's where you have uh, one set of spectrum, and you're going to send upstream and downstream over the same portion of that spectrum. If I recall, there's still portions that are reserved for upstream and some portions that are reserved for downstream, but you've also got a big chunk of spectrum where you're sending both upstream and downstream at the same time. So they use uh, this can be specialist technology that allows that the data to flow in both directions without having interference or collisions. Um, so that is something a little bit more challenging. Comcast uh, has been heading in that direction to do full duplex. Others like Charter and other larger operators are looking at doing the extended spectrum uh, and getting higher speeds that way. Uh, let's see, the same testing process will be used in all cases, Cable Labs explained. Uh, let's see, and what, what basically what you'll be able to do as you're doing this when you submit your devices for testing, I wasn't able to highlight the text on the, on the article for some reason, so I'm going to read everything, which I don't like to do. Uh, so basically what uh, Cable Labs is going to allow you to do is test you know, one mode or the other or both at the same time. So you can do both the uh, extended spectrum DOCSIS and the full duplex. Uh, if you've got a device that supports both, you can, do, um, you can do two different devices and the pricing depends. The pricing is really high. <laughs> the pricing depends on what you're doing and how you're doing it, but you can test both. Um, and then they've got what they call success-based testing approach. This is new where prior you'd have to get all your ducks in a row and submit your equipment and then hopefully it worked and if it didn't then you'd have to come back and i think there would be additional charges if you had to resubmit a device now what they're saying is we really want to get these this stuff out quickly so we're going to let you submit something if it's not you know you don't have to go through and make sure everything is perfect i'm sure they want them to make sure that everything is pretty good <laughs> um, you don't have to make sure everything is perfect and then if you, you know, we'll come back to you if something's not right, and then you can send it, fix that, send it in again. So they've got this kind of iterative success-based approach. It says uh, to facilitate the testing process, Cable Labs and their partner Curios are introducing two new elements. Uh, and this is billed as an introductory offer. I think this means, um, you know, take advantage of this now because you won't have this available later. In other words, if you wait until a year from now to submit your equipment. They won't need to do this because there'll be other equipment that's already been tested and out, maybe even out in the market. So uh, they're trying to do this for the people that can come in early to get equipment in front of them as quickly as possible and get this process going. Uh, this allows device manufacturers to submit devices as early as possible without risk, rapidly address issues, and therefore demonstrate specification compliance and interoperability as soon as possible. So again, if they submit something that's not quite right, They'll get feedback on that. They could resubmit, and they don't have to worry about additional charges uh, as part of that. As it mentions here, it's also a potential money saver. The fee for initial certification for a DOCSIS 4.0 cable modem for FDD or FDX runs $209,000. So if you're the manufacturer, you need to pay that to get certified. Uh, the fee climbs to 262 if a device is a combo tested for both FDD and FDX. So you got to pay 209000 each if you've got two different devices, let's say one that supports full duplex and one that supports the extended spectrum DOCSIS, or if it's one that supports both, you pay $262,000 um, if a device is combo tested. Recertification testing on a DOCSIS 4.0 device runs at $112,000. But again, you would not have to pay that if you get on, on early on this and you're going through this, what they call success-based testing approach. All DOCSIS 4 assert testing fees run higher than those for DOCSIS 3.1 and DOCSIS 3.0 devices. Um, and then these are, do they talk about the other one here? Success-based. Um, well, we'll see here in a minute. So this, this is the fees right here. So you can see you've got DOCSIS 4.0, and then you've got DOCSIS 3.1 testing right there. Um, Euro DOCSIS, packet cable, .5. 
So these are the these are the prices. Then you've got uh, sub subsequent submission, including other things. So this would be if you submitted later, and I'm assuming this would be, again, for those that, that don't have participate early on, or if you come back a year or two later and you need to resubmit, that kind of thing. Uh, and here's the other part. So under the new two-for-one test results plan, devices will be tested for compliance with the DOCSIS 4.0 specs and an interoperability with DOCSIS 3.1 networks to support some early deployments. So in other words, what they're going to do is they're going to test, I think it says right here, that means uh, initial device, device testing will focus on verifying operation of DOCSIS 3.1 systems and will later be tested against DOCSIS 4.0 systems to ensure compliance with the 4.0 spec. So when you send in a device, the first thing they want to do is make sure that, it's, that it interrupts with DOCSIS 3.1 because they want to make sure that anybody that gets these devices and put them in their network, uh, cable operators that put them in their network, that they will work with their existing equipment and existing uh, uh, other, other things that they've got in their network, their actives and their passives, those kinds of things. They want to make sure that that all interrupts with the DOCSIS 3.1 network that they have in place, assuming they have that in place. Um, and that's, again, one of the great things about DOCSIS is that the standards tend to be backward compatible. So you could put a DOCSIS... You could put a, a really early DOCSIS 2.0, maybe modem, maybe one, who knows. You could put really early modems on your plant, and they will work. While they won't get really good performance out of them, they're, they're going to work. But you can have, you don't need to do a wholesale replacement of all of your CPE when you upgrade to the next version of DOCSIS. Cable operators tend to do that as they need to. You know, If they want to go in a certain area with higher speeds, they may have to do that depending on the DOCSIS standard and what they're doing. Uh, but you don't need to. When they went to DOCSIS 3.1, they didn't need to throw out all of their DOCSIS 3.0 modems. They could do, do that you know, over time, and it's going to be the same thing here. So there needs to be that backward compatibility. Once that's confirmed, then they go through and they're going to check the DOCSIS 4.0 stuff. So uh, I linked to this article in the description. If this is uh, something that's of interest to you, you'll find that. I also linked to this. This is the Cable Labs a notification about this DOCSIS 4.0 certification. And there is a webinar if you are an equipment manufacturer or uh, anyone else that might be interested in this. Maybe you do diagnostics or something along the lines where you want to know what this is all about. There is a link to a webinar right here. Uh, and that is on Wednesday, June 28th at 11 a.m. And uh, you'll be able to see that here. There, there's a, also a link to the certification program inf information right here. Uh, actually, this is a link to an FAQ. So this is this is helpful information here. An FAQ: What's DOCSIS 4.0 certification all about? It talks all about the various details of that. That's a good document to have. That's linked in there, and then also link to the Curio site um, that's got information about Cable Lab certification. It's got uh, the steps that you go through. Uh, it talks about the two different uh, new things that are available here: the success-based testing and the two-for-one test results. Uh, there's some documents here and the pricing, uh, the ridiculously high, but I'm sure necessary pricing for doing your DOCSIS testing. Somebody's got to do the testing and it's all got to work together. And when it does all work together, it's a beautiful thing. Again, uh, it's in the cable world, the HFC world is nice how it all uh, interacts properly. So thanks for joining me. Hope this was of interest. If so, if you'd give me a, a like on the video, I'd appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, click the subscribe button. Click the bell to be notified when I'm live. Thanks a lot for joining me for Broadband Deployment News, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.